It's one of those moments where history suddenly feels like it's holding its breath. A moment when a fact so strange, so unexpected, lands in the middle of a centuries-old mystery and forces everyone to stop and listen. In 2025, a team of researchers using state-of-the-art scanning technology announced that beneath the paws of Egypt's Great Sphinx, the silent stone sentinel that has watched over the Giza Plateau for more than 4,000 years, they had found something. Not a vague shadow on a radar screen. Not a possible anomaly that could be chalked up to natural erosion. No, what they found was a distinct void, a sharply defined space measuring roughly 12 meters by 9 meters tucked 5 meters below the surface and Here's the kicker, showing clean right angles and crisp edges. In other words, the unmistakable fingerprint of human design. That's the kind of revelation that drops like a stone into the still water of Egyptology and sends ripples racing outward. Because for decades, whispers have clung to the Sphinx like desert dust. Whispers of hidden chambers, sealed tunnels, and the fabled Hall of Records, a mythical underground library said to contain the lost knowledge of ancient civilizations. Most scholars would politely roll their eyes at such talk, dismissing it as romantic pseudo-history. But now? Now there was data, seismic tomography, a method that lets researchers see through stone by measuring how vibrations travel had lit up a section of earth beneath the monument like a ghost appearing on an x-ray. And it was no random cavity. This thing was deliberate. Someone thousands of years ago carved it into the bedrock. Dr. Manu Saifzadeh, the Egyptologist leading the investigation, couldn't hide his excitement when he discussed the results. Speaking to a small but captivated audience online, he described how his team had scanned around the Sphinx, tapping and listening for hidden spaces. Most areas were unremarkable, but then came the signal the one that pointed to this rectangular void. Safe the day went further, connecting the dots to an old controversial theory that this could be the best candidate yet for the Hall of Records. It was a name pulled straight out of legend, first popularized by Edgar Cayce, an American clairvoyant in the early 20th century. Cayce claimed, without any physical evidence, that an archive of ancient wisdom was buried beneath the Sphinx, placed there by a lost civilization, perhaps even survivors of Atlantis. It was the kind of claim main stream archaeology typically avoids like a live cobra, but the new scan with its precise measurements and geometry meant the theory suddenly had a very real shape under the sand. Of course, nothing in Egypt is ever that simple. Saif Zadeh tempered his excitement with a dose of realism. If the chamber had ever contained anything extraordinary, it was likely long gone. Based on the site's groundwater levels, the space would have been flooded to a depth of about 5 meters. Water is not kind to papyrus or ancient artifacts, and Saif Zadeh suspected something even more frustrating, that the chamber had already been breached in antiquity and whatever treasures or records it once held had been carried off to Hermopolis, a city in Middle Egypt. In other words, if the Hall of Records ever existed here, we may be staring at its empty vault. Still, empty in this context doesn't mean unimportant. For one, even the act of confirming such a space exists under the Sphinx, challenges decades of official denials. Egypt's former Minister of Antiquities, Dr. Zahi Hawass, has spent years shooting down claims of hidden chambers under the monument. In his view, there is no lost library, no buried city, no Atlantis vault hidden in the bedrock. And yet, Hawass himself has acknowledged the existence of three distinct tunnels associated with the Sphinx, one drilled into its back in 1937 by a treasure-seeking French engineer, another near its north flank that was once believed to hold treasures before it flooded, and a third found behind the so-called Dream Steli between its paws. The official the official explanation is that these were either maintenance shafts, exploratory digs, or natural fissures later squared off by human hands. But for many, the coincidence of man-made voids and persistent legends is just too tantalizing to ignore. To appreciate why this new scan is such a big deal, you have to understand the Sphinx's long, complicated relationship with hidden spaces. Over the years, explorers and archaeologists have documented a whole catalog of cavities, from drilled shafts to mysterious pits. Some are obvious like Pairing's Hole, bored into the Sphinx's back in 1837 by British engineer John Pairing under the orders of Howard Weiss. He went down 27 feet before getting stuck, abandoned the effort, and left it filled in until it was reopened in the 1970s. Others are more enigmatic, like the six-foot-deep hole on the top of the Sphinx's head, which may have once anchored a crown or headdress, but has also been used as an access point by treasure hunters over the centuries. 
There's the rump passage that winds down toward the water table, the keyhole shaft in the enclosure floor, and the sealed eastern shaft between the dream steli and the chest of the sphinx. Some of these go nowhere. Others have been bricked over, gated, or filled with concrete, but together they've kept the idea of hidden interiors alive in the public imagination. And then there's the legend itself. The Hall of Records is the kind of story that clings to a place like the Sphinx because it offers a bridge between what we know and what we hope might still be true. The idea of a sealed archive holding the accumulated wisdom of ancient Egypt, or of a civilization even older, is intoxicating. It would be like discovering the great library of Alexandria all over again, only intact this time. The walls could hold star charts, engineering diagrams, philosophical texts, maybe even proof that the Egyptians had knowledge passed down from a lost age. It's a story that refuses to die, even though decades of digging have never produced a single artifact to prove it. The frustrating part for researchers is that investigating these voids isn't as simple as just grabbing a shovel. The Sphinx is a protected monument, and the Egyptian authorities are understandably cautious about allowing anyone to drill or excavate under it. Every intervention risks damaging the structure, which has already suffered from thousands of years of erosion, vandalism, and overzealous restoration efforts. So most of what we know about the spaces beneath it comes from non-invasive scans, ground-penetrating radar, seismic tomography, electrical resistivity surveys. These methods can tell you where a void is, how big it is, and sometimes whether its edges are natural or artificial, but they can't tell you what's inside. That's what makes the new 2025 scan so maddening and so magnetic at the same time. We now have high resolution confirmation of a man-made chamber with defined right angles sitting exactly where legend says something should be. And yet, barring a dramatic policy shift, we might never get to see it up close. For the conspiracy-minded, that's practically an invitation to suspect a cover-up. For cautious scientists, it's a tempting but frustrating dead end. Meanwhile, the Sphinx just sits there, as it has for over four millennia, gazing east toward the rising sun, holding its secrets in stone. Was this chamber a tomb? A storeroom? A ceremonial chamber flooded deliberately to keep its contents hidden? Or was it nothing more than an ancient maintenance space, later in inflated into legend by the human need for mystery. The desert isn't saying, but here's the thing, discoveries like this have a way of shifting the conversation. Ten years ago, if you'd brought up the Hall of Records to a mainstream Egyptologist, you'd probably get a polite but firm lecture about pseudoscience. Now, with modern instruments lighting up hidden rooms exactly where the myths say they should be, the lines between fringe theory and possible history are starting to blur. And if one void exists, who's to say there aren't more? The Giza Plateau is a vast archaeological landscape, much of it still buried under sand and modern construction. Every scan, every dig has the potential to rewrite a chapter of history. For now, all we have is a handful of measurements, a ghostly outline beneath the bedrock, and the knowledge that someone, thousands of years ago, carved a room under the most famous statue in the world. Maybe it was emptied and forgotten. Maybe its real treasure isn't gold or scrolls, but the questions it forces us to ask, and maybe, just maybe, it's a reminder that even in the most studied corners of our planet, mystery is never truly gone. On. It's just waiting, five meters down, behind a wall of stone for someone brave enough to open the door.